How's it going, folks? Welcome to the channel. We are here today to discuss something that's important for us to talk about, man. And it's, you know, the, the transformation we're all supposed to go through when, we're, when we go through this walk. If you aren't transformed, you can't make it to the end destination. You, your end goal is not going to be what you hope for it to be if your transformation doesn't take place. All right. You just can't awaken to being an Israelite and then poof, you're going to make it to the kingdom. Poof, you're going to get salvation. Poof, you're going to you're going to be part of the, the first resurrection. It doesn't really work like that. Right. You know, same way, you know, the Christians have it wrong thinking, you know, just by being a Christian, they're going to be saved. There's a lot of things that Israelites get wrong as well. In the same way that, you know, Christians, you know, incorrectly try to hold on to certain things because they believe those things to be godly or they believe that the most high doesn't really have a problem with it. You know, Israelites do the same thing. We, you know, there are, there are some similarities in the actions and the activities of both groups, you know, with some slight, you know, differences between them, of course. So um, I really want to get into this because there are some people out here, man, who are being led by people with the wrong spirit. And because you're being led by them, you're going to become like them because you often become like your teachers, like the people who you respect. All right. And that can be an issue because not everybody is lifting up our head, Yahweh Shai, so that he can draw all men unto him. They are seeking to get you to follow them. They have made themselves idols and the people that follow them have made them idols. And so they are corruptible things, corrupting other people, making them corruptible things, a corruptible seed. All right. And so I want to save as many people from the fire as possible. So consider it, consider this. Um, my life preserver jacket that I'm taking off myself. I made it out of the water. I'm no longer drowning. You know, I'm going to take off my, my life preserver and I'm going to throw it back into the water. Feel free to, feel free to grab onto it if it if the spirit moves you to do so. Otherwise, you can feel free to drown. All right. I wouldn't want that for you. I don't want that for you. And that's the reason for the video. So let us give all praise, honor and glory to where it belongs to our heavenly father, the highest. I'll be Yahweh in the name of the beloved Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, who is our king, savior and our redeemer. All right. He is the example of where of what godliness is and what we are supposed to transform into and become like. See, our father didn't just tell us what he wanted us to do. He sent us an example to follow. He gave us something, someone that we can look at and say, OK, if I do it like that, if I become that, if I talk like that, walk like that, act like that, I'll be pleasing to the father. How do I know that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased? All right. We know that the father uh, loves Yahweh Shai and that he is the example for us to follow. So when we do that, when we become like him, we already know that we are pleasing to the most high. We don't have to wonder if we are. We don't have to be hopeful. We have a, a barometer to use to know with certainty whether or not the most high Yahweh is pleased with us as his creatures. All right. So we're going to begin in James chapter three, because a lot of people get this wrong, right? Because there are a lot of Israelites who say, well, you know, Yahweh Shai, he was an austere man. And because he was an austere man, you know, he spoke strongly and he was tough and, you know, and, you know, he spoke with strength and so forth. Yes, he did. He was masculine. He spoke strongly. He was an austere man, but what he didn't do, he didn't spill. He didn't spill. He didn't speak with a filthy tongue. All right. He didn't have a profane tongue about him. He didn't. And there is nowhere you can go into the scriptures that will lead you to believe that he did. And I know where they're going to go because I, I listened to him and they're going to go to where he he, you know, spoke of a woman being a dog. And they're going to say, well, what is a female dog? <laughs> it's a bitch. huh? Right. So so he basically called her a bitch. Right. But he didn't, though, did he? He, he, he called her a dog. All right. He didn't use profane language to make his point. So can we not use, you know, non-profane language in order to make the same point? Yes, we can. It's like being a clever lyricist, being able to make a song, you know, about something, you know, provocative or suggestive, but write it in a way, word it in a way 
that's not profane so that you can still get the same message across without using profane language. You have a song now that's playable on the radio. So how about we as prophets, we as the men of the Lord, deliver the message radio friendly? Can we do that? We can't make a radio friendly you know, message or version of, of the gospel or I don't even got to say version of the gospel because the gospel itself is radio friendly, quote unquote, so to speak, right? But we can't deliver it in, in the way that it's intended to be delivered. We can't deliver it, you know, in the way that Yahweh Shai meant for us to deliver it. Why, why can't we do that? What is the problem? See, it's because of men's own pride, their own ego, their own jealousy, their own envy, their own hatred, their own feelings. They're walking around with, you know, trying to, they're using their feelings as their North Star, as their guiding light. It's leading them, all right? That is a spirit, all right? That is a left-handed side spirit that is causing them to err and they don't understand what's happening to them. Okay, so James chapter three, the tongue is a fire. Hmm, I wonder why a point was made to go into this to discuss how the tongue is a fire. If what you say and how you say it doesn't matter, then why make a point to discuss this? See, they'll try to tell you that I'm a feminine. I'm an effeminate man and I like masculinity and blah, blah, blah. I was raised by my father, masculine. I'm not effeminate. I am a man's man. I hate effemininity. You know what I'm saying? I hate weak men, despise them to, my, to, to their core. So I'm not that guy. But they'll try to lead you to believe because I'm doing a lesson on having upright conversation. That is because in my spirit, I'm weak. I have a weak nature. I have a weak spirit about me and I just can't take strong speech. All right. That's what they'll try to lead you to believe, because that's what the devil does. That's what Satan does. Woe to them who call good evil and evil good. Right. Be careful who you're following. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation for what we for what we teach. See, you try to be many masters. You raise the likelihood of a reaping condemnation. All right. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. Listen, if any man doesn't offend in word, the same is a perfect man. So what does that mean? That means, what's the inference? The inference is that a man who, who offends in word is not a perfect man. All right? If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. So what's the inference? That a man who does offend in word, he's not not only is he not a perfect man, but he is unable to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. All right? Showing you the power of the mouth right? You can, the mouth, if you can control the mouth and subdue the mouth, you can control the whole head. You can control the whole body. If you get the mouth under control, all right? And the idea is to bring our bodies under subjection to the spirit, but you can't do it if you can't first rule your mouth, all right. And I know, see, because once upon a time, I know what it's like. I remember there was a brother and I love you too, you know, brother, you know what I'm saying? By the way, and we were having a conversation and he was like, he was listening to my lessons and he said, you know, brother, well, how do you feel, you know, about, you know, a bit of your language, you know, it's just kind of, uh, I don't know. And see me at the time I fought it. I fought against it. Why? Because I had the same mindset. Why? Because I was in the same mindset of some of these other brothers because I'm listening to them and they're rubbing off on me. And so I'm utilizing their same excuses, right? And I'm coming up with a truth of why it's not really that bad and 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 why, you know, he was wrong. And you know, you know, and hey brother, you know, it's just because, you know, that's that Christian spirit. You're still new, newly out of Christianity. So, you know, you're not you're just not able to really take this. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I told him that. You know, I told him he was wrong but I was the one that was wrong the whole time. 
All right. If you go back far enough, you hear me speaking just like that. The way same thing that I'm coming against right now, you will hear me speaking that way if you go back far enough in my lessons. But they're still up. Why? Because I want people to see my growth, man. None of us started off perfect. It's, we're supposed to have a journey. We have a walk that we go through that's supposed to transform us. Anyone who sees my earlier lessons and they listen to me now, they will see my transformation take place. And that's a beautiful thing to behold. I want it, be, want it to remain there as an example to others of where you can begin and where you can end. Just because you're in one place at one moment doesn't mean you're going to stay there or that you have to stay there. I want everyone to be able to see that I was led via the spirit, transformed, made a new creature, and I am a better version of me now than I was once upon a time. So the same can happen for you. Lord willing, it does. And that's what I'm here for, to help. All right. So behold, also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listed. All right. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. All right. Yes. Um, a little a little fire can kindle a large matter. A large matter. It can, in other words, your mouth can make something big out of something small. You can blow a situation up and make it 10 times worse by your mouth. All right. The tongue is a little member, right? You're right. It, it takes a, a, little, a little, a small device in order to turn a large ship. All right. Your little mouth can cause your entire body to be destroyed. That's why Yahweh Shai said that which goeth into a man doesn't defile him, but that which cometh out of the man. That which comes out of a man's mouth, that defiles the man. Right. That's what he said. What did you learn from that when he said it? If you're going to try to lie on the king and say, well, he was the example that we can be profane and we can talk any way we want to and it doesn't really matter. Why would he say that? Why would he tell us that what we what comes out of our mouths can profane us? Meanwhile, he himself is being profane. It's just crazy. It says, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body. Sounds like what Yahweh Shai said. And setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beasts and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. This is true. Therewith, bless we, Allah Hayyam, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of the Most High. You'll have brothers in one minute, they're saying all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai. And then in the next sentence is these niggas that and these niggas that, these fucking two-thirds and two-thirds and blah, blah, blah. Curse this, curse that, blah, blah. Just filthy conversation. Cursing. Right? And just disrespecting other men of the Most High, other children of the Most High with the same mouth they just a sentence ago used to say all praise, honor, and glory to the highest. This is what they do, all right? Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. This shouldn't be the case, brothers. We got to stop it. It has to stop. Let today be the day when you get rule over your tongue, bring your tongues into subjection, rule over your spirit, all right? 
kill any desire and need to have to speak that way. There is no necessity for it, especially in the ministry of Hamashiach. None. It has no place except in the case like where I just use it as an example of what not to do, right? I had to I had to go there to illustrate the issue, to show some what to stay away from because maybe those people haven't seen or heard these guys speaking like this. So they didn't know exactly what I was talking about and they needed to hear it. And there you go, you, you heard it. And, it. and it tastes like filth in my mouth when I said it. Pretty sure you can hear by the way that I said it that it made me uncomfortable to say it, to repeat it. But yet they say it so comfortably. They say it like it's sweet as honey in their mouth. It should it, that one that kind of language would only be sweet as honey to demons. All right, not to those who are led via the Holy Spirit. It should taste like, taste like garbage to make you not eat it, to make you not consume it, to make you not speak it, all right? There's no incentive, right? You have an incentive to eat things that are tasty because they are tasty, but a disgusting thing, what is the incentive to eat it? Unless you, you just, you're a filthy person and you have a, a wayward tongue, <laughs> right? Let's, let's continue. It says, Doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either a vine, figs, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. What does that mean? Men who speak filthily are unable to speak righteously. The Holy Spirit in a person does not cause them to be profane and um, upright in conversation simultaneously. It doesn't happen. The Holy Spirit will move far from you. Perverseness. So you know them by their fruits, right? You know who the Holy Spirit is not indwelling with. Who is a wise man endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom, with meekness of wisdom. You shouldn't be boasting. You, sh you should be humble with meekness of wisdom, not arrogant, not with a I'm better than you attitude or mentality or language with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth, all right? The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. If you're saying that, you know, there's somewhere in the scripture that justifies and backs up, you know, you speaking profanity, having a profane mouth, you are lying against the truth. You are blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Imagine how confused a person is going to be when they're hearing a man speak about God and godliness and so forth and how we got to be upright and holy and set apart, better than all the other nations, not like them. We got to not do the things the other nations are doing. You know, we can't do this because the other nations are doing and then turn right around and then do the same things the other nations are doing. They use this per profane language these other nations invented and use. You know, the same people will tell you, oh, well, you can't celebrate birthdays because nowhere in the Bible does it tell you that it's okay to celebrate birthdays. You can't do this because it doesn't say in the Bible nowhere that you can do that thing then they'll turn right around and do things that there is nowhere you can go into the Bible that says that you can do that thing. Right? They turn right around and, and speak with a filthy mouth. And a person that is new in the faith will be confused. Like, what is going on here? Wait a minute. Is that godliness? Is that what God is like? 
wait a minute. If he transforms you through the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit makes you like him, is this how God speaks? Is this the heart? Is this the mind of God? Does God approve of this? It sounds like these guys are, sounds like they have some wisdom, but listen to how they talk. Is that godly? It must be because these guys seem to know what they're talking about. They have some wisdom, so God must be working with them. So it must be okay to talk like this and to treat people like that. Oh, okay. Okay. That's confusion. That's earthly, sensual, devilish. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. All right? Listen to the characteristics that we should have in righteousness. All right, let's go to John chapter 3. Verse 3. Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of the Most High. Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of the Most High. Verse 5, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of the Most High. When you are born of water and of the spirit, it transforms you. It makes you like our king and it makes you like our father. Anybody still speak, still speaking with a filthy mouth. They have not been born of water and of the spirit. So what does that mean? They cannot enter into the kingdom of the most high. You want to see a man who is not going to enter in the kingdom? Watch, watch him and listen to him speak. You hear you see red letter. This is Yahweh Shai speaking, right? So if they have not been made new creatures, if they have not been born again of water and of the spirit, they cannot enter into the kingdom of, of heaven. See, it's the same spirit of the Pharisees. Remember Yahweh Shai said that they shut up the kingdom against men because they neither themselves are entering into it. Same thing. See, they're causing other people to be locked out of the kingdom because they themselves are not entering. So they teach you to be like them, to be profane, to be unholy, to be wicked, to be unrighteous. They're leading you down the same path of destruction that they are going on because they aren't entering. Where does that spirit come from? It is the same spirit of Satan who is destined for the lake of fire and want as many other people to follow him there as possible. His children, those who are doing his bidding, they have the same spirit as him. They have his spirit dwelling in them. And so they are carrying out his mission. You know them by their fruit. All right, let's go to Galatians chapter six. Galatians chapter 6, verse 15. For in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Again, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. What's the most important thing? For us to become new creatures. Because the only way you can become a new creature is if the Holy Spirit comes to you and transforms you. Right? That's the only way. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of the Most High. And upon the Israel of the Most High. Why does it say the Israel of the Most High? Because the, the Most High has separated a portion of Israel for himself. Not all of Israel are going to be saved. Not all of Israel belong to him. All right. He has those that belong to him and those that do not. Those that do not will perish. All right. 
Again, you know them by their fruits. Just listen and watch and they will out themselves. The spirit of I can't help it is in the earth strong in these days, meaning no one is able to hide themselves. All right. It is we are at the end of this thing, at the end of the movie where the villains have to reveal themselves. They can't hide anymore. All right. Let's go to Matthew chapter 12. Got to become a new creature. That's the only thing that, uh, that availeth unto salvation. Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men. Anyone telling you that Yahweh Shai, because he was an austere man, he spoke profanely, or to say that there's somewhere you can go into the Bible where it's justifying being profane and perverse, right? Being unholy in conversation. They are blaspheming against the Holy Spirit because they're saying that the Holy Spirit, you know, led them there. Because remember, the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit of truth. Revelation and understanding comes via the Holy Spirit. Wisdom comes via the Holy Spirit. So if they say it in their wisdom, they learn in the scriptures that, you know, it's okay to be filthy and have an evil tongue. They're saying the Holy Spirit led them to, to that truth, which is not the truth, which means they blasphemed against the Holy Spirit. They lied on the Holy Spirit. There is no forgiveness, forgiveness for that. A lot of people have no idea the crime they are guilty of. They have no idea. And they're calling themselves teachers, prophets, apostles, disciples the elect or the hopeful. Let's go to Colossians chapter three. Colossians chapter three, verse eight. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy, Con communication out of your mouth, filthy communication out of your mouth, filthy communication out of your mouth. We got it? Good. Let's go to Psalms 37. Psalm 37. Verse 14, the wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Who loves to slay those who are of upright conversation? The wicked, the wicked of our own nation will come strongly against those of us who are of upright conversation. They will call us gay. They will call us soft. They will call us effeminate, right? You ain't a real man. You weak. You got a weak spirit, Ock. <laughs> you got a weak spirit, right? Mind you, if we were in person, the same men wouldn't dare Call me effeminate to my face. Trust me. How do I know that? Because no man has, has ever had enough heart to say anything as foolish in my face. Never. I'm just not that type. See, I, I got an aura about me that says, don't play with me. <laughs> you, you feel me? And, and the physical tools and skills to back up that my, my aura. You get what I'm saying? So no, there's nothing effeminate about me. I am a manly man, a man's man, Yahweh's man, Yahweh Shai's man, strong. I'm not weakened by having upright conversation. All right. Don't let these people try to guilt you or insult you into losing your salvation, into losing your crown, into joining them in the lake of fire. They're going to try. That's what the devil does. Satan is a deceiver. Don't let them deceive you. 
Don't let them beguile you, all right? With cunningness of conversation. They will if you let them. Gird yourselves up, all right? Put on the whole armor of God. Study the whole Bible. That's what I'm saying. That's why they can't get me, because I got on the whole armor. See? They love to take advantage of those who don't really know the scripture. And I'm not from none of their groups or organizations. But I am just as strong, if not stronger, in the word as they are. So you can't trick me. You can't fool me. And I'm hoping to share what I know with the rest of you so that you can be strong. All right? Against the craftiness of Satan. Psalm 50 and 23. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. And to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I show the salvation of the Most High. Who is he going to show the salvation of the Most High? Him that ordereth his conversation aright. All right, let's go to Philippians chapter one. Verse 27. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel, the good news of the Messiah, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. Let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of the Messiah. This is what we are supposed to do, all right? It is the, this is the duty of the body, of the Lamb's bride, to echo his sentiments, right? To help, to be his helper. That's what the woman is. The woman is a helper to the man. Right? The bride, we are the helper to Yahweh Shai. We are supposed to teach what he taught. The husband establishes the structure for the house, and the woman passes on the structure, passes on the culture given from her husband. Right? She's not supposed to make up anything new that goes against what he said. Right? That puts her at odds with him. And many are at odds with Yahweh Shai. And I'm not sure if they really know it or not. Many are doing so willfully. But some are just doing so ignorantly and they have no idea what position that they are putting themselves in. First Timothy chapter four, verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers. The believers in Yahweh Shai, his body be an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, which is love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. All right. Let's go to First Peter chapter one. First Peter chapter one, verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yahweh Shad Mashiach as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. All right, these people want to speak like the heathen do. They want to talk like the heathen. Use what they learn, the perverseness and the profanity they learn from the heathen in order to teach the message of the Most High to his children. While trying to tell you that you got to depart from Babylon, depart from this world. Right, stop going after the ways of this world, and then they will talk after the manner of this world. Make that make sense. You can't really. They'll try to try to make it make sense. They'll try to justify it because they're they're hypocrites, right? They are the Pharisees regenerated with the hypocritical spirits. They're gonna try to make you believe 
that you're somehow wrong because you're following the scripture. You're not following them. You're not following their elder apostles and so forth. So you're the one in the wrong. Right? Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter three, verse eight. You see the title, Godly Living. All right, we're gonna start at verse eight. I could get all of it, but for the sake of time, let's just start at verse eight. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing. But contrary wise, blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called. See, we're called to do such things, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it, all right? Again, at verse 10, for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. Let him refrain his tongue from evil. Let's get the meaning of the word evil, of a bad nature, not such as it ought to be, all right? Not such as it ought to be of a mode of thinking, feeling, acting, base, wrong, wicked, troublesome, injurious, pernicious, destructive, painful. See, this covers it. All right, they can't dodge it and say, well, that doesn't mean what you think it means. No, it, it, it means exactly what I know it means. You can't escape it. Can't escape the truth. See, because I'm being led via the Holy Spirit and through the Holy Spirit, we are walking through the scriptures in truth. Not taking things out of context, not interpreting, but letting the Holy Spirit speak truth to power. Second Peter chapter two, verse four. For if the most high spirit, not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that should after that after should live ungodly and delivered just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. See, the most high knows who the righteous are and he knows he sees when the righteous are compassed about of the wicked and the most high knows how and he has a plan on when he are going to deliver them from the midst of the wicked. All right. He knows and he will do it. But you got many who will who who will not be delivered because they have men's persons and, and admiration. They are respective persons. Right. They're a part of these groups and they can't walk away because they don't want to be ostracized from the group. They need the group. All right. It's the same spirit that, that causes young boys to join gangs. Right? It's the same spirit. The need to belong. Right? To belong to a group, to be a part of something bigger than yourselves and to, to have backup and support. Right? Because you're scared to be out here on your own. It's a scary place to not have any backup. Right? And that's how many walk through this truth. Like they're scared to be out here without backup because then you'll get jumped by all the gangs if you say something they don't like, if you have a doctrine or an understanding that they don't agree with, that they don't teach, that they don't understand, right? You'll get, you'll get jumped out here in these streets 
by their masses, but you can't be scared. You can't be scared. You can't be scared of getting jumped. You can't be scared of getting ganged up on. You can't be scared of opposing wickedness. You can't be opposed of standing out there alone for the gospel, alone for Yahweh Shai. You can't be scared. That's an effeminate spirit that makes you feel like you need, you got to be part of the group. You can't stand out on your own. So you seek out groups to join for strength and comfort. That's just a, a collection of effeminate spirits coming together to feel strong and to not feel weak. See? Truth be told. All right? He says, for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing. That righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. And many of you are like me. You're being vexed from day to day. Your righteous soul is being vexed from day to day because of the unlawful deeds that you're seeing and hearing from our nation. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Yeah, see, he reserves the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished by making them believe that they are justified, letting them believe that it is okay to do what they're doing. That's, that's going to cause them to get punished. By letting them believe that there's somewhere in the scriptures they can go that justifies their position. By letting them believe that because Yahweh Shai was an austere man, that he's okay with their perverse mouths, with their evil communication. See, that's just the most high reserving them who are the unjust unto judgment to be punished. That's what he's doing. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. See, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. See, so they'll speak evil of people like me, right? Because they're not afraid to. They're not afraid to because the fear of the Most High is not in them. Remember, the fear of the Most High is the beginning of wisdom. See, these men, are they don't have enough wisdom to say, that's the son of the Most High God. I may not understand what he's saying or agree with, with, er with everything he's saying, but that doesn't mean he's not a son of Yahweh just because he's not part of my group. So I better refrain my tongue from speaking evil of that man, of that brother, because I'll bring condemnation upon myself. Let me not do that. See, they're unable to, right? So we're getting dignities, right? And what we want to come is, is down here to a thing belonging to the Most High, a thing belonging to Christ. These so-called men are not afraid. They don't have the spirit of, of, of the fear of the Most High in them that will cause them to be afraid to speak evil of the thing belonging to the Most High or the thing belonging to Christ. So those belonging to the Most High and to Yahweh Shai will be evil spoken of by ungodly men, right? Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these, these men as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroy, speak evil of the things that they understand not. What is their end? And shall utterly perish in their own corruption. You hear this? Let's get Second Peter chapter three. Let's come down to verse ten. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? What manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation 
and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. The day of his coming is fast approaching. For those of you looking to, for the fulfillment of the promises, be diligent that you may be found of him when he comes in peace without spot and blameless. That's what you need to be focused on at this time. All right. You know what not to do. You know, you know who not to follow. You know how to spot them. So there is no excuse. All praise, honor, and glory belongs to none other than the heavenly highest. To the most high, Abba Yahweh. And to our beloved king, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Grace, peace, and blessings to the Israel of God, to the Israel of Yahweh. To his saints. To those seeking to cleave unto the house of the most high. I pray that you guys were all blessed by this and you learn something as well, that you learn how to spot who to stay away from. All right. Learn what is OK and what is not acceptable. We have to be transformed right by the renewing of our minds. You got to renew your mind. If you were a person who once before believed that it was okay to speak that way, to talk like that because of whatever reason or justification you were taught or learned or came up with on your own, you got to be renewed. You got to, in the light of new information, better information, more understanding, knowledge being increased, have the ability to turn away from ungodliness. I was there. I'm proof that you can be there and leave there. You don't got to stay there. Those that stay there, they're the unjust. They are the unjust being reserved unto judgment and punishment. I pray that you guys were all blessed and benefited from this. Go out and be a blessing to someone else whenever possible. You know what I say. Each one, reach one. Shalom.